Why is it that 20% of schools are well resourced and well functioning and those students who can afford to go to those schools, why is it that they have an excellent quality education? And why is it that 80% of South African children who go to schools in townships and rural areas receive a very low quality education? 80% of our schools, the schools which are serving poor and working class children, are not functioning. These schools are under-resourced and these schools are underperforming. And this is a tragedy for our young people and for our country. And it's something which we have to address in more ways than speaking about it and calling it a crisis, but by doing and, and, and taking serious and drastic action. So Equal Education, what we do, the first is that we research educational issues. So we try and gain an understanding of why South African education is in crisis. Then we try and bring together young people, particularly in those township and rural schools, who are the ones who are most affected by this inequality. And we bring that information to them and we hear from them what it is that they feel is wrong and what needs to change. Our organisation is campaign-led. Yeah, it's campaign-led in that we identify issues strategically which can help us to improve conditions within schools and across the education system, but can also help us to build a movement of young people across the country that can be a political force for change. Of the 24,793 public schools in South Africa, 3,500 schools do not have electricity. Nearly 2,500 schools have no water supply and nearly 11,500 schools use pit toilets, while 913 schools have no toilets at all. So essentially we took up the campaign for norms and standards in the middle of 2010. And we took it up because the department in a policy document had actually promised to adopt norms and standards by the 31st of March 2011. What happened then was that we raised public awareness, we mobilised our members around the adoption of norms and standards and this was never done. What eventually ended up happening is that we took the Minister to court but she then settled the case before it was meant to be heard and she agreed to adopt norms and standards. We now have a court order against the Minister whereby she has committed herself to adopting norms and standards and if she fails to do so, she will be in contempt of court. The reality is that nearly 20 years after democracy, poor black children are not being afforded a decent chance of a quality education and a better future. These young people, many of them have dropped out of school. We've got a 50% dropout rate in our schools today. And these young people are sitting at home or sitting on corners and looking for low paying work and they are angry and they are frustrated. And the reality is that if we don't do anything to address the inequality and to address the complete dysfunctionality within our education system, that this is something that will come to haunt all of us. And that, that is a reality.